your brain, you're in the nuts domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Nerds Domain Podcast. Um, today, I'm here with Ron uh, Newcomb, and we're going to talk about the Rangers uh, Kickstarter. So, Ron, why don't you say hi? Yeah, hello. Yeah, I'm excited to be here and, and talk about the Rangers. Got some cool stuff for you guys. Excellent. Well, let's start off with a couple of standard questions we ask everybody, and these are really important, so I need you to really buckle down and think about these. You got it. So... In, in the impending zombie apocalypse, yeah. what is your weapon of choice? Oh, I'm going to go with a uh, with a hatchet, man. I'm going to go up close and personal. Make them make okay. them come to me. Yeah, going with that with okay. some type of hatchet. Maybe I modify it, but I'm going to let them you know get up close. I don't want I want it fail safe, so I don't have to worry about rounds. Okay, so and, and plus it's a tool for later, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, well, um, let's go on to question number two. Given all of the sci-fi you know, what planet do you most want to visit? Uh, wow, that's a that's an interesting one. And, and you know what, I, man, I don't know if I uh, if I have the exact planet, but certainly uh, Thor and it, oh gosh, I forget the name of the planet, but Valhalla, you know, the movie Thor, where they go up to, and that would be epic cool i would love to go up there and and be with the uh superheroes of thor and his lineage so uh, yeah okay. def- definitely there all right lots of food lots of fighting oh man it looks cool doesn't it yeah I- i'd be in it does that. okay so um let's go ahead and get into your project let's kind of start off with your sales pitch what exactly is the rangers and why do you have such a passion for it well you know it's really a lot of the things that i love kind of smashed together into a storyline that we created right from the start, which is really cool and a lot of fun. If you've ever done any type of role-playing game, it's a whole world immersion and world creation that you got to go through and world mythos. Um, and so we've we've done that, but really it's it's an elite group of rangers. Uh, think of them like the Navy SEAL of their planet, of their world, and they're on the periphery of the kingdom. Um, they're also the voice of the king, though. They're they're the judges, the jury, the executioners, if need be, on these peripheries, on these borderlands, um, because they have, you know, a lot of stuff going on in the inner city and, and, and politics and stuff on these fringes. There's been um, at, at least a number of years of peace, so people have the, – the intrigue and, and nicety of what the, they thought the Rangers were has now kind of dropped off a little bit, and so – and yet here's these guys on these borderlands that they have to kind of maintain and keep their post and, and help the local population. Um, and they begin to uncover this reawoken darkness that, that's long been since turned into myth and didn't think they, it ever really existed anymore. But they start to uncover clues of that this darkness has, has reawoken in in what we call our shadow elves or our dark elves called the Umbran that we've kind of created. Um, so they don't look really like dark elves you would think of in D and D, um, but they certainly have those dark inner ability and, and, and desires and stuff. So uh, we follow p- specifically a, a, an elite group of four called uh, it's Lieutenant Wolf and they're called the Wolf Pack. So I was in the Marine Corps for uh, a little bit and kind of have an interesting background myself but I've taken some of the strategies and things that, that I've learned throughout the years and kind of put them also into a format. And, you know, it's, it, it's the, the Tolkien, it's Game of Thrones, it's Robin Hood even, um, but it's also a little bit of Jedi in there too, at least what I thought was Jedi originally, maybe not what they ended up being, but what I thought they were. So when, it, you know, when a Jedi walked on, this, on the scene, man, you know, when I first saw him, because I grew up in the 80s, it was like, holy cow, that is such a huge deal. And it's kind of like these rangers are such a huge deal when just one ranger show up. So when you get four of them or you get a group of them, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a pretty big deal. And, and it, it goes south pretty quickly for these guys. And we're also learning through the eyes of this rookie that they have. Um, so it's, it's a whole world immersion that we have. There's this uh, term called transmedia, which means that we're not just doing a film project, but we also have a card game. Um, a video game in mind, the novelization. There's a lot of ways that that fans um, aren't just going to be able to engage and 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 watch 
but we're inviting them into the process, which is really cool. And one of the reasons why we even wanted to do Kickstarter wasn't just about funding. It was about getting the fans the opportunity to be a part of it. Okay. So this will be a uh, will this be a uh, full length feature film? Is that what you're looking at? That is a great question, and <laughs> and so I have to so much so that I put it in my frequently asked questions on Kickstarter because as a filmmaker and and I've done another film, Rise of the Fellowship, that made it on the shelves of Walmart and stuff. So we have a distributor. I pitched them the Rangers. They would be excited, but it would have to be a feature. That's that's kind of the realm that they know. That's the world that I know. A feature is where I'd. I'd like to go with it. However, we're in a very different age right now, and a lot of other doors and opportunities are opening up via Netflix and Hulu and Crackle and Amazon with the original content and programming that we can easily turn this into a pilot that we pitch also as either an episodic series or um, the prelude into a film series because we've, we've written it really as a trilogy. Um, and so obviously – uh, you know, I hate it, hate that it's this way, but funding really kind of dictates what, what we'll get to go play in. And, and again, the beauty of Kickstarter is the fans will decide how much that they back it, how much they want to see it um, by, you know, the, the funding level of what we can go and do with it. So it's, you know, a fan-enabled, fan-pushed, fan-driven. And so if they allow us the opportunity to do a feature, I'd love to give them a 90-minute epic. That, that would be the, the ultimate dream. But certainly if we do episodic in 30-minute increments, I mean, how cool would that be as well? Some of, my, some of the best programming are, you know, is on TV and stuff now. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I can really go kind of either way, and I want to stay a little bit fluid until we kind of determine that. Excellent. So, so it, the Kickstarter is going to really help dictate that, I guess. That, it, it certainly will. It's exactly right. If, they, if we can raise go to our stretch goals, um, we can do a feature. If we are just able to meet the minimum, uh, 50,000, then I'm going to be able to do a 30 minute episodic type of what they call a web series. So kind of six minute breaks will be a little bit of a cliffhanger and we'll get, we'll be able to do five episodes. Okay. So, um, tell me, tell us a little bit about your company. Uh, you're with opening act productions. Um, how long have you guys been around and what sort of other films have you, have you put out? So I, um, my business partner, Scott Mathias, and I created the company back in 2009 specifically to do the film called Rise of the Fellowship, which is currently we released around The Hobbit because we were able to get a really cool tie-in to the um, Tolkien IP, and it was through a video game called The Lord of the Rings Online Video Game. So that was kind of our A-list talent attached to our film. And it's done quite well. Again, it's on Netflix and Amazon, all the ways that you can think of. You can just go to the rise of the fellowship.com and see all the ways that it's um, that you can get it. Um, but, you know, because we had success with that, we wanted to roll the dice again and, and keep it going. And we're really trying to carve out specifically a very niche fantasy based genre. Uh, we don't think there's enough fantasy content out there. The studios, they have a formula for everything. They don't, uh, if they don't find it in that it meets their formula, they're not going to do it. And so, you know, fans can't wait around for the studio to do exactly what they want. So that doesn't mean that we need to wait. You know, we can rise up. and That's where the indies come in. And so we're trying to carve out a little bit of this fantasy niche to bring fantasy content out there. But I also, I did a documentary called Made in the USA, uh, The 30-Day Journey, where a guy went around for 30 days trying to only live on Made in the USA products for 30 days, which was very interesting and a lot of fun to do. Um, and I just loved the concept so much. And the guy that led that pitched it to me that I got involved with it. Um, but really, fantasy is, is where my, my mind goes. It's where my heart is. And it's where I'd like to see more of. So that's what I'm really trying to focus on. Okay. And so you'll be directing this, is, is that correct? Yeah, I, I, was an, I, I was a guy that um, – was an actor. I fell in love with acting and, and, and did, you know, uh, marginally okay, landed an agent in LA and moved there for a little while and then kind of came home and went, well, there goes the acting thing. I got to put that aside. Um, and ultimately I became a police officer for a while. So I did that. And then uh, when I decided to go back and get my master's degree, I left that and um, had an opportunity. I, I left another company and said, you know, if I was ever going to do film, now is the time to do it. We were in the digital age. It was starting to be accepted, and so I pulled the trigger, and that's when we did Rise of the Fellowship. So I, I went from my love of acting 
and found out that I have a, a real big passion for directing as well. Um, I love to direct. It's where I find my, you know, the sweet spot. I produce because I have to. All independent filmmakers are also producers, but we don't necessarily have to love it. But without the producer, there would be no films. You know, there would be no independent film at all. So the producer is extremely important. And, you know, if you find one, shake their hand and say thank you. Because <laughs> well, it's a hard and, job. And be honest, as a producer of an independent film, you're also like 18 other things besides just producer and director, right? Right, right. And, you know, my, my <laughs> business partner, Scott, was was – wasn't as fortunate to get to go play on set. He really was the go-getter producer that just had to get things done. Because when I put on my directing hat, I couldn't focus on those things. So Scott really stepped mm. up and just had to go make things happen. So, yeah. So it looks like the three producers you have listed on your Kickstarter are you and Scott and then yep. uh, Skip Lipman. Um, and his attribute is listed as weapons. Can you tell us a little bit about Skip? Yeah, Skip is great. So I... Um, kind of stuck Skip into being a part of this. He was in this really cool documentary called Darkon that I think your fans would totally get get a uh just have a good time with. It's a documentary about LARPing, about live action role play and Skip was kind of the main guy that they followed. And I saw this documentary and he actually lives pretty close to me. So him and I struck up a conversation online and I got him into a short film a uh, little competition that I was involved with called Genre Wars, and I did that, and Skip came out and was a part of that. And so him and I formed a friendship there. But he's very, very much, uh, this, you know, cut from the same cloth, uh, loves fantasy, really gets it, grew up playing those types of games and in that story element. And so Skip has done a tremendous amount of um, additions and add-ons to the stories and epicness of the Rangers. Uh, but one of his main things that he's going to focus on is ensuring that we get the look and feel right. That's what he's done with LARPing. He's, you know, he ensures that uh, the guys look good and that our weapons are not only right, but they're, you know, somewhat fall in some type of period base. Uh, so he's really going to be in looking over wardrobe and props, um, but he's doing so much more than that. You know, like I said, it's thumbprints within the story and all kinds of stuff. He's also determined that he wants to be one of the four Rangers. And so he's been working out, he's been putting out a blog online himself, working out, trying to ensure that uh, he's one of these four guys. And I told him, um, you know, that we're going to hold auditions and he's welcome to audition. And he has just really gone after it. I'm really, really proud of Skip. So Skip has really put his heart and soul into this. He's become a real strong ally to the project. Their documentary, Darkon, won um, the Audience Choice Award at South by Southwest a couple years back. So um, he's got some cachet. You know, it's it's uh, it, it's been good. Okay. And so it looks like you've got a a, bo a, a group of people also supporting you, a board of advisors. Uh, looks like Ben Dobbins, yeah. uh, Ken and Griffin, Jason Fowler, and Ralph Singleton from uh, – Zombie Orpheus Entertainment, Arrow Storm Entertainment, and IMDb. It looks like you have a good, solid uh, group of advisors there. Is that part of your plan is to make sure you have outside yeah. views to help you kind of streamline this? Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, if any of your listeners are out there and you guys are independent filmmakers are thinking about getting into it, you know, try to ally and attach yourself with some of these people that have gone before you. Um, ben Dobbins of Zombie Orpheus, he did films uh, called Gamers that is very popular. He does a web series called Journey Quest. He's kind of the godfather of web series. These guys have been making it, making web series before there really were such things as web series. So I got him involved. The two guys over at Aerostorm Entertainment, they're the only ones right now doing true independent fantasy content in the feature-length vein. They've got a litany of films. I encourage you guys to go check them out. Um, they, you know, they're under the independent label, but the, the story, what they're doing right now, they're filming five feature films right now out in Utah. Um, I would have been foolish not to get these guys to, to kind of give me some guidance and help me out. And they've been phenomenal. And then Ralph, he's got a, a great IMDB listing, long history, um, being in the entertainment business. And you got to have someone like that, you know, kind of an older, wiser, wiser stage to, to help you along when, when you're not sure which, which way to go. So, you, um, yeah, I'm excited about our board of advisors. And then I roped in another 
company that um, does comics and graphics and things called Warpaint. And this is kind of their their first production um, that they're a part of. But Warpaint Studios is uh, – I've also roped them in as well, and they've been great. So a lot of the stuff that you've seen or can see on the, uh, as far as graphics go, those guys uh, have done and, and are doing. So Excellent. So it looks like you uh, you started, what, four days ago, five days ago? Is that right? Yeah, we started at uh, Saturday at 3 p.m., March 8th, and the Kickstarter okay. campaign will run for 33 days. So it will end April 10th um, at 3 p.m. So, yeah, it's been about four, coming up on five days and about two hours my time. So uh, it be about five days. So, and you guys are, what, 20% of the way there, give or take? Yeah, so, um, again, if anybody is, is thinking of a Kickstarter, they say that your first day, you really need to get to 3% of your budget. If you get to 3%, if you don't get to 3% of your budget, that you're, you've got an uphill fight coming. If you get to mm-hmm. 30% of your budget, you've gone viral. Um, if you get to 20% of your budget at any point, you're 80% likely to reach your goal. So we just hit, yesterday, we hit 20% which is a great Excellent. feeling because knowing that, you know, we're 80% likely to succeed doesn't mean that you let up. Certainly it gives you a little oh, bit more confidence that, that you got something going right. Well, excellent. So um, it looks like you've got a bunch of different levels available. Um, mm-hmm. I believe the first option to, to get a, a digital copy is at $25. Is that right? Yeah. So you, if you just want a copy of the film, if you just solely want a copy, we've got one there for 10 bucks. Like if all you want is I just want to I just want to you know see what you guys do, ten bucks can get you a digital copy. Now if you want okay. a digital download as well as the poster as well as uh, a couple other things, um, the sound score and and things, then that's twenty five. And if you want a signed DVD, which will have some behind the scenes footage, that's uh, thirty. The twenty five dollars also gets you unique access. So as I'm in production. We're going to be doing these little side vignettes for behind the scenes to give people an inside look of how we're doing it and what we're doing it and really trying to share with them very much like what Peter Jackson did with The Hobbit, um, trying to give an insider's look on that. And you can only get that access via Kickstarter. And I think you get that at the um, $15 value and above. So at 25 you also get that. Okay. Um, it looks like you have uh, right around 25 levels to pledge at. That's yeah. about right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, um, that's about right. I, I really tried to do my homework to, to figure out what people were interested in, you know, what mattered to people, um, what would people want to have. And, and those offerings, um, a lot of strategists will say hold some back. And, you know, as it goes, as the campaign goes along, add some, you know, kind of keep excitement. Uh, we went ahead and threw them all up there because we wanted – I didn't want someone to see something later and go, oh, man, I wish I would have seen that before. You know, I, I kind of wanted that. Plus, it's – again, if anybody's ever done one, you know momentum is key. So even if you can only give a dollar right now, that's such a huge deal because it puts your name on the project. It shows that you're with us. And, you know, a dollar may not be a big deal to anybody else, but it is to us. You know, it's building that oh, – Absolutely that fan base and you can always go in later and adjust your amount. So if you want, if you go, you know what, I'm going to go get that digital copy. You can add money later um, to it, but we've given some really, really cool prizes. So it, it's, that was a, a ton of fun to do because you're just dreaming about, man, what would I like, you know? And, and that's what we put in there. And it looks like you have several levels where they can be an associate producer or co-producer. Um, you even have the $10,000 level where they can be an executive producer and get flown out to the rap party. That's um, right. Yeah, and a private screening with me sitting there with them giving a, a one-on-one commentary of what we did and how we did it. You know, because I know the, there's different fans that some like the filmmaking process, some like the story, some like the, you know, but, yeah, I'm going to sit there and watch, with them, watch the film with them, and answer all their questions. Excellent. So there's plenty of different levels. There's plenty of different options. And honestly, there – and don't take this – the wrong way there's plenty that are in the cheap range so that those of us that don't have a ton of money we can still you know get yep. in there for ten dollars and get you know the digital the digital film or get yep. in there for five bucks and just get the the soundtrack that that's coming out yeah um so yep. th- there's plenty of options there um 
so what any other hints about what we might see from uh, maybe a stretch from this project or other projects coming out of you in the future you know again it's it's kind of like a, again for an independent you are are beholden to the project that's right in front of your face um un unfortunately so right now i'm just solely immersed in rangers but i do have like i said a trilogy set out for the rangers i'm very hopeful that you know, we can kind of unfold that. It's definitely going to be in the fantasy vein of what I do next. I have a, some other stories, of course, that I have, you know, in a folder, um, other script ideas that, that have gone down the lane a little bit. Um, but I'm trying to ensure that we stick with that, that fantasy base. So if you like fantasy, um, you know, I'm asking you to, to get behind us, help us, join us, because that's what I'm looking to produce. So once the Rangers are done, it's just fold right into the next, epic fantasy that that we can create um the rangers has just been it's just so cool and been so much fun to create that you know it's, it's hard to see beyond that one because it's so rich okay and you've got several stretch goals so your uh original goal is fifty thousand dollars yes um and it looks like you've got stretch goals all the way up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars are you prepared to go beyond that like do, do you have yes. ideas beyond that 150 so yeah you're yeah ready? you know Absolutely, man. If I can dream big, you know, it's definitely in the feature film realm. And then, you know, the more money you get, the better CGI you can do. You can also get an A-list talent attached, which makes it, which makes it more marketable and more popular. Um, those things only help the production of the, of the project. So, yeah, you know, more money doesn't just mean um, anybody knows that $150,000 on Kickstarter is a huge volume. It's a huge amount. But in the independent film world, they can be spent extremely quickly. You know, I mean, one A-list talent attached, and boom, suck up your whole budget. So um, you, you can always use it to increase your value. But I would, you know, I, I'm promising people that I'm going to make every dollar stretch, and I'm going to use it to its fullest. I can assure people that. I'm not going to be banking it and saving it for the next thing. Every dime is going to go into this. So, Excellent. So where can we see you? Where can we hear about this? Where can we see you talking about this? Any conventions you're going to? What's going on? Yeah, so we, we've hooked up with um, another great company called Medieval Collectibles. They um, Your fans probably even know about them. They have a very strong brand. If you're looking for any type of LARP gear or any type of cosplay or wardrobe, um, you can go to MedievalCollectibles.com and check out those guys. They are providing a lot of our props and wardrobe. Um, and they are currently at a convention, and so they're handing out some flyers and things for us, um, and, and they've been fantastic. I encourage people to, you know, back people that back us type thing. Um, we don't have any specific conventions that we're going to on the schedule yet, but as things come up and we're, going, we're coming into the convention uh, time of the year, we do plan on some. I'm an alumni of the Gen Con convention, Rise of the Fellowship, won Best Feature Film there in 2012, and I love going to Gen Con. 42,000 people, you know, biggest mm -hmm. four days in gaming. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If you've never gone and you're in Indianapolis area, you, you need to go to it. It's, it's great. It's possible we could be at Gen Con, but right now you can go online, therangersfilm.com, therangersplurofilm.com. Um, which basically kind of leads you to the Kickstarter page, and then from there it has all our little links and things that you can find. It's on Facebook, and uh, you can go directly to our website. We certainly have a Twitter page. The Rangers Film uh, is our Twitter page. And I'm the one, basically, myself, Scott, and Skip are the one, uh, you know, you're gonna, who you're going to talk to because <laughs> we're an independent. You know, it's not like you're going to get some assistant or something. So just know that one of us is, is likely going to be answering the, the message you also can shoot us a message directly via Kickstarter, too, um, without even having to pledge. You can just shoot me a message on there. So there's a lot of ways for people to, to get in contact with us. You know, if, if you're interested in coming on the team in some way, if you're interested in auditioning, we have opened our, our auditions up to online. So if you go on our website, uh, the Rangers, I believe it's the rangers.mymiddleearth.com, there's a way for you to see how to audition for the Rangers. You don't need to be in our area. We are going to be filming sometime in late June in the northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. Um, but I didn't want to hold people up because, again, my first love was acting. 
to say, no, you can't audition. So all you need is YouTube, and you can audition, and there's you got to follow a couple rules on there. Go out and do it and audition for it. So I'd love to, to see your audition. Excellent. So uh, it looks like you have lots of different levels. I have backed you because – I can't. I'm, I'm a sucker for a good fantasy movie. Nice. And what you don't know, but my listeners do, is we're local here in Indianapolis, and we go to Gen Con every year for the nice. last decade or so. So we would love to see you out here, and I, I hope that you guys get this filming and you're done by the time Gen Con comes around, so you can come out and promote it. We'd love to see you then. Yeah. Um, I I encourage my back my listeners to go over to the website. Um, it's uh like you said, the RangersFilm.com will take you right to the Kickstarter. Check it out. There's lots of levels. There's lots of different things you can do. Um, that $10,000 level is still open, and I'm sure that uh, Ron would be happy to have somebody pledge that. Um, they're well on their way to their goal, and I think that, that this is a project worth checking out and, and even giving a dollar to. That's, yep. that's just that little bit helps a lot. So, yep. um, Ron, anything else you want to say before we go? No, I'm, you know, I, I'm excited to deliver this to you guys. I'm excited to get as many people as I can get in the boat and be a part of this thing. And, you know, even if it's, it's, it's from a fan level to present something to you guys that, that will just immerse you in and allow us to, to kind of live out this warrior spirit that we all have within us. Um, if, if, even if it's just, you know, in a video game or in a book or, or in a film, um, you know, I'm excited to, to bring it to reality. So I appreciate you giving voices to guys like me, independent filmmakers like me, without, you know, people like yourself out there helping us out. Uh, indies would never be heard. So uh, I definitely appreciate you doing that. Excellent. Well, um, Ron, thank you for coming on. And um, you can always find us on Twitter and Facebook and all those things. And we will talk to you guys real soon. And that's it tonight for us on the Nerds Domain Podcast. You can always send us an email at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or catch us on Twitter. Matt is at quiet. Scott is at underscore Big Daddy T underscore. Johnny is at Fool's Mask. Justin is at J underscore Kenneth. And Shirley is at SNED70. Or the website at Nerds Domain. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Nerds Domain. We want to thank John Shop for our music. If you'd like to help us out, head over to the website and buy something through our Amazon link. It's the same price you always pay, but a little bit comes back to us. If you enjoy our podcast, we encourage you to give us a review on iTunes and let us know what you think. We also have t-shirts available over at slashloot.com at tinyurl.com slash ndshirts. We'll talk to you real soon.